How's it going guys? Welcome to today's video. In today's video, we are talking all about cattle. So more specifically, we're gonna be talking about breeds of cattle, what breed my cattle are, and the differences between crossbred and purebred cattle. So a couple weeks ago, I shot a video that was all about kind of my history and how I got here and everything. But one kind of key detail that I left out of that was the history of this herd of cattle. So you guys may remember I mentioned in the previous video that my grandparents came out here in 57, but the cattle didn't make it out here until about the mid 70s. I want to say it was somewhere around 1975. My grandpa told me that he bought 15 purebred Hereford heifers. Hereford heifers. Try to say that. <laughs> now, a lot of you have probably heard of Hereford cattle and um, they're still fairly popular today, but back in the 70s, Herefords are like what Black Angus are today. Herefords, everybody had Herefords. That was the only breed to have in those days. So that's what we started with here. Now, as you've noticed looking at my cattle, they are almost exclusively black. Now, I say almost exclusively black because clearly number 18 there is an example of a variation from that solid black and especially her <laughs> solid red red white face brockle face kind of see peeking back there and we've got a couple of black white face as well so a little over 40 years ago this herd was purebred hereford and now 40 years later this herd is mostly black angus so let's talk about how that happened and why it happened now to the best of my knowledge uh, the different bulls that we have had here since 1975 are Hereford bulls, obviously. Uh, my grandpa told me once about a shorthorn bull. Red Angus bulls I've seen. I believe I've seen a Charlet bull out here once. This, I'm just going back from memories, you know, when I was a little kid. Um, since I've kind of been in charge of things, I've used Red Angus, Black Angus, and Hereford pretty much exclusively. Now, from a producer's standpoint, you want dark cattle. You want black-hided cattle because for whatever reason, they always bring a premium in the sale ring. And I think the reason for that is that the Black Angus Breed Association has done a really good job marketing that breed. Um, you hear, a lot of times you hear about certified Black Angus. There was even a restaurant called Black Angus and that people that know nothing about cattle have probably heard of Black Angus. So it commands a premium. So with that being said, you might ask yourself, why even bother breeding to any other breeds? Why not just breed only Black Angus cattle, have purebred Black Angus mothers and breed to purebred Black Bulls, and then you get that premium every time, right? It makes perfect sense. But there's a good reason why we don't do that. Now, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. When I say we, I'm talking about commercial cow-calf producers. Obviously, there's a place in the industry for purebred breeders. We need purebred breeders to get purebred bulls. And the reason why we want to use purebred bulls is because purebreds are predictable. So when I say they're predictable, what I'm getting at is I can go down to a black gold, black Angus sale, and I can buy a bull. Now, when I buy that bull, I can look at his EPD sheet. EPD is expected progeny differences. And what that tells me is basically what his calves will do as far as how heavy they'll be when they're born, how heavy they will be when they're weaned, how heavy they'll be at their yearling weights, and a lot of other data. Um, there is, they now even have a docility score for bulls. So you know if you're getting a crazy bull or a gentle bull. Um, they have the expected milk production. They have scrotal circumference, which um, is just an indicator of how productive a bull will be if you're gonna use them for breeding. So they have all kinds of data that you can learn about these animals. And the reason is, is because purebred is basically inbred. I mean, that sound, I know that's kind of like an icky word people don't like to use, but the reality is, is to get a purebred animal, you have to keep breeding like animals to like animals to create that breed. So at some point, you will cross over those lines and you it has to be inbred in order to be purebred. So over the years, through inbreeding, we have created all these breeds and we've done a great job at making these animals very predictable. 
We know what color they're gonna be. We know how big they're gonna get. We know how fast they're gonna grow. Basically, all the relevant data that we want on these animals, we have it. Now, it almost sounds like, well, I mean, purebreds are the best, right? Because, you know, they're so predictable. That can help us with management decisions. We kind of can bank on what the animals are going to do. And, you know, there, there's a lot of reasons that might make that attractive. But as with pretty much anything in life, there's a trade-off. So first and foremost, it's probably worth noting that uh, nobody's really been able to create the, curf the perfect cow yet. And it's not for lack of trying. But I think what happens with the different breeds is that they, they start to kind of chase after one trait and then that's all they focus on. And in, in getting that trait that they're after, they end up losing traits, other desirable traits. You know, um, a good example of this is Wagyu cattle. Wagyu cattle have really highly marbled meat, really expensive meat. Um, that's where Kobe beef comes from. But from what I've heard from people that have actually tried to raise them on like range conditions, those cows can't even take care of themselves. They don't know how to survive without humans. Now, for some people that might work, but for a lot of ranchers that won't work. We need cattle that know how to take care of themselves. So basically in a nutshell, I don't wanna to get too scientific with this, but when you have purebred cattle, you give up a lot of hardiness, a lot of toughness in the breed. Um, there is a way to measure this and that is it's based on the percentage of chromosomal pairs that are alike or dislike so if you have a purebred black bull breed a purebred black cow each one of those chromosomal pairs get their chromosomes from the same breed so they are zero percent different now you take that same black bull, breed him to a purebred Hereford cow, now you have 100% different chromosomal pairs. So this is referred to as heterosis. 100% heterosis is good, 0% is bad. 100% would be 100% crossbred, whereas 0% would be purebred. So the other way you might hear this referred to is hybrid vigor, which I like that a lot better because it's a much more descriptive term and it actually tells you kind of what, what you're doing. Hybrid vigor, that makes perfect sense. You get two things that are not alike and you put them together and it creates a strong, more vigorous animal. So I could go on on that stuff forever, but you know we're not, we're not gonna get too in depth in all the genetics and science and all that stuff. I am gonna tell you though a little bit more about these cattle. So like I said, they started from Herefords and over the years they've been bred to black bulls mostly. Now what I've been trying to do is go black bulls every three or four years and then on the fifth year say, we'll switch it up and go with like a Red Angus or we'll go with a Hereford. Um, so that way I can maintain a decent level of hybrid vigor but I'm also keeping cattle that are mostly predictable and mostly black hided. And that way, I'm, to me, that I'm kind of getting the best of all the worlds. And that's really what we're trying to do with crossbred cattle. So it stands to reason that as we walk through these cattle, you will see mostly all black. But like this girl, for instance, has a little bit of white on her chin. Of course, she won't show it to us. There we go. So. More than likely, she got that from Hereford somewhere. To, now, here's a great example. This is basically just a black Hereford. So, her calves will most likely be black. They could be red, depending on the bull. Um, but yeah, as we walk through here, we're going to see those kinds of differences. And this girl, I'm thinking, she looks very red Angus to me. Not just because she's solid red, but just a few other things that jump out. So that is kind of what we're looking at over here. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed checking out the cows with me and talking about breeds and crossbreeds and purebred and all that other good stuff that we went over today. Until next time, I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.